Most countries have a day set aside to mark independence, national day, or celebrate an event that happened years back that meant a lot for their existence and identity as a nation. Many citizens who were old enough will remember and be able to recount the activities that happened that memorable day. For instance, if you ask many Americans who were old enough at that time now, they will tell you where they were on that fateful morning of September 11, 2001, as the hijacked plane crashed into the World Trade Center. The profound effect of that singular day changed America forever. Many Americans will tell you that there was America before 9-11 and a totally different one after that day. I was so young then that even when my elder brother told me days after the incident, I couldn't fully comprehend what had happened until years after. Same goes for the day Obama was president of United States. In Nigeria, for example, there are many days that many would remember where they were at that time. For instance, when Nigeria gained independence in 1960, became a republic in 1963, when the first coup was plotted and carried out in 1966. When the civil war started and of recent, when the June 12th of 1993 election was annulled by the then military head of state, General Ibrahim Papangida. I was only 10 years old in 1998 when the then head of state and brutal dictator General Abacha died. And I still remember the celebration and the joy that rented and engulfed the nation. But none of those events had a profound effect on me like this day exactly five years ago on July 15, 2016. I was sitting in the comfort of my living room in Sakaya when I started hearing announcements from the mosques around us and people started coming out. Now, for many of us who don't know, Turkey is an Islamic country with mosques almost in every district here in the nation of Turkey. Now, the words coming out weren't calls for prayers. It's totally different. And what started to filter him that there is an ongoing coup. And everyone should begin to move to the city center to protest this. There was panic everywhere. People were leaving their homes in mass to their available grocery stores, such as A101 Beam. Then there was one we call Navi Dires, and so on, to stock up their homes before they closed that evening and begin to prepare for the uncertainty that is about to happen. Some of my friends who traveled to a nearby city of Izmit recounted that they saw military checkpoints while they were coming back to Sakaya. That was totally strange for someone who had been in the country for over a year and five months, six months, I've never seen or heard of a single, let alone multiple military checkpoints with armored tanks and weapons drawn. I sat down watching Al Jazeera live and following the local news and event from the comfort of my living room. After which I went to join my Nigerian friends and we all watched and talked about the event as they unfolded. Now, here are some of the lessons I learned on this day exactly five years ago. Turkey as a nation has its problem, as many other nations. Various parties with different ideologies and opinion on how the country should be governed. But that night, I saw a united civilian populace who were ready to die for democracy. I saw a large number of young men on TV without weapons confront the coup plotters and soldiers carrying 
weapons and hammer tanks. I saw an outcry from all parties and this result was what changed the outcome of that day. Secondly, from the lips of everyone, where was Mr. President? Has he been killed or placed on house arrest? Even though guns were fired at Taksim Square, police headquarters and some military installations were attacked, soldiers had already taken over a TV station and the famous Bosphorus Bridge. News and videos of President Erdogan on first time began to filter him later. After the coup plotter had targeted and restricted social media apps such as WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook, this video from Mr. President calling on the citizens to rise up will go down as a one of the highlights and events that changed the outcome. So I appeal to all those in Nigeria clamoring for regulations and banning of social media in Nigeria. A day may eventually come that it is this social media that will be there to rescue you. Now, I am not an expert or a political analyst on Turkey affairs, but that day changed many things in this nation. A lot of arrests were made from that night and days and weeks and months after. Not just among the soldiers and the military, but cutting across all sectors, both the private sectors. A lot of people lost their jobs also. One of my lecturers in Sakaya, then I was told was fired. July 15th has since been celebrated across Turkey. Now, let me ask, where were you in Turkey exactly five years ago when this incident happened? If you were in Turkey, please drop it in the comment section below and let us know where you were, what you were doing, and how you were able to undo that day. Now, if this had happened in Nigeria, what would have happened? Would the citizens have risen up to confront the co plotters? Well, having had many in the past, of course attempted and successful goals, I strongly doubt if there will be an uprising. But one thing I know for sure is that my mom will be on the call checking out on us. An event in my area always comes to my mind. Gunshots were fired in the neighborhood and as we all were going to peep to see what was so happening, my mom was shouting and pleading with us to all go down flat and lie down. <laughs> so I can assure you my mom will be on the phone calling us to know that we are not one of those who are fighting to save democracy. Anyway, I can't blame her. She loves her children. This is the Arimus Family TV. If this is your first time of watching, you please do us a favor, click the subscribe button, and make sure you leave your notification bell turned on so you get notified each time we post a new video. My name is Sheku Arimu. Thank you guys for watching. See you in our next video. Goodbye.